Go, 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 Johnny, go, go. Johnny, be good, and the Red Sox prove to be better than the Yankees. It's good night, New York. Hello, World Series for Boston. Sports Center throwing its best pitch. This is Sports Center. Call the Yankees my daddy. There is a Yankee who is down. It was Don Zimmer. And the Yankees are going to the World Series. Wake up, Bambino, and have me face him. Maybe I'll drill him in. Redemption for the Red Sox, a truly grand finale in the Bronx, absolute bedlam in Beantown. And oh, what a finish in St. Louis. Cardinals find a way out of elimination thanks to a hero at home plate, plus down and out of L.A. Phil Jackson explains why the Lakers had exactly two too many stars. How's it? Welcome to Sports Center alongside Steve Berthume. I'm Neil Everett. A game seven to a sports fan is like cotton candy to a kid. And we've all got sticky fingers by now. You know the scenario. Red Sox, Yankees, ALCS, game seven from Yankee Stadium. Derek Lowe getting the start over Tim Wakefield. Yankees pulling out all the stops. Bucky Dent throwing out the first pitch. Kevin Brown would start for the pinstripes in a game they had to have. First inning, two outs, one on, big poppy. David Ortiz, say hello to our little frat. His fourth home run of the postseason, his 11 RBIs, a new LCS record. Bottom one, low. Brings up Gary Sheffield. Derek Lowe was terrific Wednesday night. That ends the inning. Second now. Top two, one out, one on. Brown facing Bill Miller. Already with one on, and there's ball four. Javier Vasquez quickly up in the Yankee bullpen. Short leash on Kevin Brown. Next up. He walks Orlando Cabrera. That loads him up, and Brown is gone. He lasted only one and one-third. Gave up five runs on four hits. Vasquez in now to face Johnny Damon, who has vanished in this series. Only four for 30 coming into this at-bat. Here's the pitch. Swing. There's a drive down the right field line. Toward the corner. Back into the corner. Sheffield looks up. It's a grand slam! Six nothing Red Sox. Damon's first grand slam since April 21st of 2002. Let's go to the third inning. Low throwing a one run one hitter, but Pedro taking off his jacket. Is he warming up? Well, Sheffield he couldn't get warm. 0 for four awful final four games after he smoked them in the first three. Fourth inning, Johnny Damon again. Three for six, six RBIs. Johnny Damon only the third player to hit two home runs in a decisive game seven. The other two Yankees, Yogi Berra and Jason Giambi. 8-1 Red Sox. Look at this. They just can't believe this. No one can. Fifth inning, two outs. Look at Derek Lowe. Gets Cairo to end the inning. In the sixth, Lowe with two outs facing Sheffield. Derek Lowe pitched six innings of one hit ball. He struck out three. And a guy who had pitched his way out of the Red Sox rotation this season, playing without a contract for next year, pitches the game of his life. Let's go to the seventh inning. Pedro Martinez into the game, despite what Derek Lowe had done, and Hideki Matsui tees off on him immediately. 2-0 pitch. Matsui goes two for four. He gets the double. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? They're yelling at Pedro. Well, Poppy was their daddy at Yankee Stadium, but that's another story. Bernie Williams deep to center. Is it in the park? It stays in the park off Adidas. Matsui wearing his PF Flyers. He scores. Williams gets a double. It's 8-2. The Timmer, Mike Timlin, warming up. Call to arms. Two batters later. Kenny Lofton, who got the start over Ruben Sierra. He singles. Williams scores. It's 8-3. And, and, they, and they woke up the ghost. Two batters later, Miguel Cairo flies out to right field. Ends the inning. Pedro, one run, three hits. Two earned. And all of New England takes a deep breath. Eighth inning, one out, 9-3. Mike Timlin on. Gets A-Rod. Rodriguez 0 for 4 in the big game seven. Ninth inning, Kurt Schilling watching. A-Rod watching. Alan Embry on. Bottom nine. Two outs, two on. Red Sox a pitch away. The 1-0 pitch. Swing and a ground ball to second base. Hokey Reese has it. He throws the first, and the Red Sox have won the American League pennant. They mob out and Embry on the mound. The Boston Red Sox have pulled the greatest victory in team history. 
10 to 3 to final. They are going crazy in the Red Sox dugout. And at every bar in Boston, Johnny Damon, who had vanished in this series, comes up with the big hits. David Ortiz, your LCS MVP. It's the 11th pennant for the Red Sox in their first since 1986. And they win it without a single RBI from Manny Ramirez in the series. On Mickey Mantle's birthday, the Red Sox become the first team in Major League history to win a best of seven series after trailing three games to none. Boston, three outs away from elimination, back on game four, completes its impossible comeback. We, we've always respected their, their ball club. We, we knew they had a ton of ability. Um, you know, the fact that when they get on a roll, they can do things like they did to us. I'll tell you right now, man, the, the group of guys that we have in that clubhouse is tremendous. And I'll tell you, we believed in each other. We believed in Mark Bellhorn the whole way. This guy won yesterday's game. Johnny Damon was struggling. He wins today's game. This is what it's about, man. This is what it's about. It was just one of those special games where you felt like once you got out there, you got in an instant calm and you felt like you were in control of the game. And, you know, we, we threw a lot of change-ups, the left-handers, the right-handers, and we were getting some swings, and so we kind of stayed with it the whole game. The last few innings, I was thinking, there's going to be a World Series <laughs> at Fenway this year. Jeez. Yankees dropped to two and four in Game 7's played at Yankee Stadium. And for the first time in 29 years, and for just the third time in history, a team has won a best of seven after overcoming a 3 0 deficit. The Red Sox joined the 75 New York Islanders and the 42 Toronto Maple Leafs, A, in this most exclusive club. Those 42 Leafs staged their rally to win the Stanley Cup. As for the 75 Isles, they nearly pulled off the identical feat in their next series that year against the Flyers. They fell behind 3 0 and forced a Game 7, but lost. This time, the Red Sox won. Oh, so much more from the Bronx when SportsCenter returns. How the Red Sox finally, in a Game 7, no less, fought off the Yankee Stadium mystique. Speaking of, where have you gone, Bronx Bombers? The Yankees fall flat in the clutch. So is the, the curse of the Bambino at long last met its match? Oh, by the way, they, they play in the National League, too. Game 6 in St. Louis was a nail-biter. Extra innings ending with a without-a-doubt walk-off winner. Plus, winning not the only thing in Lakerland. Just ask former coach Bill Jackson. He tells us why coaching the game's two biggest egos was simply too much for one man. All right, let's look back now on Game 7. Harold Reynolds is here with us. Peter Gammons will join us from the Bronx in just a minute. First, let's, Harold, start with you. If this is the greatest comeback in sports history, is this the greatest collapse in sports history? This has got to be tough for the Yankees to swallow. Yeah, it's tough for them to swallow. It's tough for me to swallow. I picked the Yankees to win this. But congratulations to the Red Sox. But no, seriously, on the Yankees side of things, I know they're absolutely devastated to get that close to going to the World Series. And that's what you play all season for, is to get to the World Series. And nobody has done it better in the last seven, eight years than the, than the Yankees. They've, they've been the team to beat. Every road to the championship goes through New York. And for the Red Sox to go do this to the Yankees on their home field makes it even more special for the Red Sox and even, I think, a little bit more devastating to the Yankees. Peter, what about that? It had to be tough for Brian Cashman and George Steinbrenner to watch the Red Sox celebrate on their field in a Game 7. Absolutely no question. I, I you know, I, I think it's greater for the Red Sox than it is devastating for the Yankees, but I don't think George Steinbrenner is going to see it that way. I mean, this is the biggest collapse in the history of baseball. They had Mariano Rivera on the mound, two games in Fenway Park, couldn't get it done. They came back to their home field and didn't get it done. And this is the Red Sox. This is Larry Lucchino and John Henry, and it's something George Steinbrenner can't abide by. And for Kevin Brown and some of the other people that, that did not come through, I think it's going to be a long winter, and I think there'll be a lot of... I don't think there'll be a lot of changes, but there will be significant changes, and there'll be a lot of hell to pay. Peter, this was quite a change in form we saw from Derek Lowe. This was a guy who had pitched his way out of the Boston rotation, had a bit of a meltdown with the media at one point, saying, why is everyone always saying I'm a basket case? But here he comes, six innings of one hit ball. Simply amazing. Well, it's especially coming off the fact that he pitched five and two-thirds innings on Sunday and came back in this game. They really hoped for three innings out of him, and they didn't want him to throw any more than 50 pitches, but his sinker was so good. I mean, he, he was able to, to, to early on with A-Rod early in the game, to get the ground ball. He was able to strike out Gary Sheffield. He kept throwing those great breaking balls to Sheffield, 
and he'd start him behind him and come back over. And then he came back and got Derek Jeter the second time around the order. Uh, with, well, excuse me, with Jeter on base, he got A-Rod and got Sheffield again. His sinker was dominant all night long. 13 ground ball outs. And he said, you know, when he got out there, he just felt terrific. And and But they wouldn't let him go any further because they don't want to hurt his arm because he's clearly going to go back in the rotation come the World Series. Well, what about that, Harold? Derek Lowe is absolutely cruising him. He had had three straight one, two, three innings. Why take him out? And why, of all people, bring in Pedro Martinez? Well, I was a little surprised. I mean, he'd thrown 13 batters. Of the 18 possible first pitch strikes, 13 hitters. He was on such a great roll. Pedro Martinez, why? Well, it was his day to throw. Maybe that's what Terry was thinking. Or maybe he just wanted to get him out there with the whole you're my daddy thing and maybe have him have a good outing. But I didn't like the move. I, I just thought it was It not brought necessary. the whole stadium right to life. They livened right up. Well, I didn't think it was necessary because I felt like uh, they were in such a good group. And at the time, obviously, they must have had a script. And they said, Derek's going to go as long as he can. Then we're going to go to Pedro. Then we're going to go to the rest of the bullpen. I didn't think that, that that move needed to be made, but obviously Terry has made some right moves in this, this series, and uh, it's one that paid off for him. Another right move he made was sticking with Mark Bellhorn because the players insisted. He also stuck with Johnny Damon, had a couple of other options at the leadoff spot, but here's a guy, Harold, who came into this uh, game three for 29 in the series. It, it seemed to come from nowhere from Johnny Damon. It came back as quickly as it had vanished. Well, I think one of the things a manager does, he looks at the at-bats that Johnny Damon had. Obviously, the first game, Messina, struck him out and made him look silly, but he progressively got better. Now, you got to remember, this guy had a 300 season. He scored over 126 runs. He hit over 20 home runs. I mean, he was really the, a big part of the reason we talk about Manny Ramirez and David Ortiz is Johnny Damon. You stick with the guys who got you there. He started having pretty good at bats in game four and five and six, started making pretty good contact. He busted it out in game seven. That's why he stayed with Johnny Damon. It was a track record, not the recent first three games of this series, but the last four. And it certainly paid off. Uh, Peter Gammons, I remember uh, David Ortiz started his Red Sox tenure fighting for at-bats with Jeremy Giambi, of all people. Now he's the ALCS MVP. Yeah, he's come a long way from being non-tender by the Minnesota Twins and being uh, being sort of lambasted and lampooned early on in his career a year ago. But that was silly. He was a, he could have easily been the MVP last year. He was certainly the most valuable player on a pennant contending team. And this season, he was he was a huge factor. He's an emotional factor, but he's one guy that's really got the sense of the theater. The home run off, off Washburn to end the the ALDS. And then all the home runs in Boston. He hit the home run to get the back within one run in one game. He hit the home run to win one game. I, just, he gets so many big hits, the, the, the single to center field to win game five. And listen, when, when Johnny Damon got thrown out of the plate in the first inning, there was a little bit of sense. The Yankee crowd was back in it. They thought they had a rally. Now there are two outs. First pitch from Kevin Brown. He, hits it out, and it just sort of said, it was the statement, here we come. And Derek Lowe said, you know what? We all relax. When Ortiz hit that home run, it changed us all. All right, Peter, thanks very much. We'll get your thoughts on the Cardinals and the Astros coming up in just a couple of minutes. The HR, finally with you. What's the one thing you're going to remember about this series above all else? Well, obviously, the, coming back to win four straight, but this is the one team in baseball that had the ability to do that. You think about it, they had five guys that they could go to start, the firepower in that offense, and the way they were set up. I thought this was the best team in baseball going into the postseason, man for man, and, and they proved it. All right, Harold, thanks very much. We'll check right. back with you later in the show. Thank you. Well, in Sports Center. Slam, slam, Johnny Damon. Johnny Damon came into Wednesday hitting only a buck three in this ALCS, three for 29 in the first six games against the Yankees. But his seventh game was not too bad. He saw the big home run. He is the third player to hit two home runs in a decisive game seven. The other two were Yankees, Jason Giambi and Yogi Berra. Damon's grand slam his first since April 21st, 2002. He came alive just when the Red Sox needed him. After the game, he spoke with our Peter Gannitz. Johnny, is there any way to explain how you can have a one-week struggle and then come out and have one of the games of your life? Oh, uh, no, there's really no way to explain it. I mean, uh, I picked the wrong time to start a slump, you know, the first six games. Uh, the swing started coming back right after the uh, third game a little bit, but um, tonight was something amazing. You know, I uh, uh, did some hard work these past two days over in, in the cage and uh, got my swing right. So uh, I felt great all night. Um, and I hit 
some decent pitches. I mean, the first fastball by Vasquez was in. I got jammed. Um, and the next one was a fastball up and away. So, uh, I mean, the, uh, the work definitely paid off. But, uh, I mean, it feels great to uh, finally contribute in this series. Um, it seems like it's been the whole team. You know, it's not just one person. Well, what did you think when you saw that ball going out when, when you hit the first the grand slam? Well, I, I knew we needed it because um, a sack fly in that situation would not have um, done enough for us. I mean, um, this Yankee ball club is a very good ball club. Being up 6 nothing against them definitely gave us some breathing room, and it definitely made Derek Lowe go out there and be relaxed. You know, he, um, he pitched awesome on a couple days rest, and um, that's what we needed to do. We needed to score early, and we needed to score often. When that game ended and you looked around this stadium, was it, was it hard to imagine what you guys had accomplished coming back with four straight wins? Um, well, we always have faith in ourselves, but, um, you know, these fans here were very respectful. You know, they, um, they stood up and they um, applauded us. A bunch of them did, and uh, we commend the Yankee fans for that. And, um, um, but what we did was something amazing, something that never was done before, but something that we believed that could happen. And, uh, um, you know, I'm proud of every single one of those guys in the clubhouse. Johnny, congratulations, uh, and uh, have a good World Series. All right, thank you very much. Peter. Okay, back to you. All right, Johnny Damon redeems himself, came into game seven, three hits and 29 at-bats in the series. The Grand Slam, just the third ever in a decisive postseason game. Damon also became the third player to hit a pair of home runs in a game seven. He also set the record for most RBI in a seventh game. Ground ball to second. Reese. The Boston Red Sox have won the pennant. This is Bedlam. We've been waiting a really long time for this to happen in Boston. Uh, 86, I was like seven years old. I don't even remember it. But now, perfect age, best time of my life. Right now. I, can't even, I can't compare this to anything. The Pats winning it. This is a Red Sox town. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. That's what the city did. A lot of people were down on them, but we kept the faith, and now we're here. World Series, four wins in a row. I'm glad to be a part of it. I'm glad that I'm from Boston. And you know what, Yankees, you, you know, you, you did a decent job, but you couldn't hold it out in the end. Hey, Go, Sox! I'm not going to say I, I'm not psyched during the World Series. The fact that we just beat the Yankees, reverse the curse, yeah! Woo! All right, potty and wicked hot in Boston now that the ALCS is over. Tim Kirkchen is in St. Louis. Peter Gammons is in New York. We are double-fisted with analysts in the Budweiser hot seat. Rapid fire here. Peter, let's begin with you. Will Red Sox Nation now be content even if they don't win the World Series? Well, I don't know if they're content, but there has been a huge cloud lifted off the franchise. Listen, cue up the who, play I'm free. It means a lot. It's not only how they want it, but where they want it. And against two. Steve, Steve they're not, they won't be content. They had two goals this year, beat the Yankees and win the World Series. One goal is done, but they will not be satisfied, I'm sure, until everyone stops talking about 1918. The Yankees at one point in game four were three outs away from a sweep. Peter, is this the biggest collapse in sports history? I think in New York's eyes it is. There may have been others, but Mariano Rivera on the mound twice, coming back to Yankee Stadium twice, and the Red Sox, who they'd always had under my thumb for all these years. No, I, it's a huge collapse. I'm sure there'll be a major meeting in Tampa this morning. This is the biggest collapse in sports history, especially given these two teams, what happened last year, what happened in spring training, what happened in game three of this. I prefer to look at this, though, as the greatest comeback in sports history. Peter, who takes the blame for the Yankees? Uh, I think it'll, it'll probably start with Kevin Brown, and then we'll move over to Jason Giambi. And um, I, I just think that, that, that the Brown injury and the pitching collapse, will just there'll be a lot of ramifications, and then they can just have a $280 million payroll next year. 
There are so many people to blame here. The hitters just didn't hit and the pitchers didn't didn't pitch. But in the end, George Steinbrenner's got to get a little bit of the blame here. I still think on some level this is a collection of really good players rather than a really good team like the 1998 through 2000 Yankees. Peter, the Yankees haven't had too many low moments on the field. Is this as bad as it's ever been for the Yankees? Well, I mean, I saw Horace Clark play on this field, so it's not the worst <laughs> it's ever been. I mean, it's it's tough, but they still won 100 games. They're still a great team. They still have, you know, two or three Hall of Famers. They just had a very bad four-game stretch against a very good team that never feared the Yankees. I saw the Stump Merrill teams of the early 90s. Now, that was Les Miserables. This team set a major league record with 61 come from behind wins this year, and they gave us an awful lot to write about. All right, guys, last question. Peter, we begin with you. Is the curse over? I think the curse is all about the Yankees, and that's why I think it's been lifted. I think that Red Sox fans, not the players, although the players have to listen to it for the last five years and have been oppressed by it. But to the Red Sox fans, it's always been about the Yankees. Now they're free to just go ahead and play and win a World Series and, and actually play without people reminding them that they can't beat the Yankees. Yes, the curse is over for the Yankees, especially by beating them the way they did game six and seven at Yankee Sa uh, Stadium, game seven on Mickey Mantle's birthday. But I still don't think the curse will be totally over until they win the World Series. Tim Kirchin, Peter Gammons, you're off the Budweiser hot seat. Thanks. The Budweiser hot seat, brought to you by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. From Wednesday's top stories to Wednesday's top plays, scenes from Yankee Stadium figure to make our top plays cut. And after that, Phil Jackson clears the air about what eventually forced him to deliver an ultimatum in Lakerland. Put me on this ball club, then I have to go. All right, top 10 moments from an amazing American League Championship Series. Number 10, bottom nine. Sox down 4-3. Dave Roberts, the tying run. The 1-1 pitch. He's not going to bunt. He swings and lines one up the middle in a center field. A base hit. Roberts hits third. Here he comes. Bernie Williams' throw is cut off, and the game is tied. Okay, so game four is tied. Now number nine, game four not tied anymore. Keep your line way back, and this ball is gone! Way back! Number eight, game five, bottom eight, the Yanks of 4-3-1 on. Mariano Rivera facing Jason Veritek to center. Dave Roberts, again, some key base running for Roberts in the series. Comes in to score Rivera's second blown save. All right, number seven, same game. And there, this series might be over, and the Yankees... This Yankees are winning. If that ball stays in play, Ruben Sierra forced to hold at third on the Tony Clark ground roll double. Number six, still game five, top 13. Tim Wakefield against Jorge Posada. Jason Veritek does not catch Wakefield normally. It's Doug Mirabelli and uh, Veritek, as you can see, all kinds of issues. Yankees with three pass balls in the inning, but they get out of it. They strand second and third. And that goes to number five, bottom 14. Swing and he muscles one. Shadow center, base hit. And here comes David to win it. The Red Sox are going to New York for a game six. And David Ortiz does it again. At number four, Jason Veritek had one of the key at bats in that game six, a 10 pitch at bat. And he finally knocks it into center field, scoring a run, gives the Red Sox a 1 0 lead. That got Boston to Mark Bellhorn, who hit the controversial home run. A couple of batters later, initially ruled a double, then it's gone. Well, I got number three. I got more controversy in game six. Alex Rodriguez, Bronson Arroyo. He karate chopped me. That's Arroyo said afterwards. A Rod trying to knock it out. Jeter scored all the way up from first. A Rod out. Jeter back to first. Number two, game seven. Damon bases full. Swing a high drive to deep right. Back toward the corner. It's all Sheffield looking up. Grand slam. Johnny Damon. And number one. Last out. Swing a ground ball to second base. Pokey Reese has it. He throws to first, and the Red Sox have won the American League pennant. They mob out an embryo on the mound. The Boston Red Sox have pulled the greatest victory in team history.
history. It's a pretty long history indeed. ESPN's Peter Gammon said it after the Red Sox won game six. Wednesday will be the most highly anticipated game in the history of baseball. Yeah, the next game is the biggest cliche was an understatement on just how big game seven was at Yankee Stadium. Here's Peter. Beyond the star performances everyone recognized, from David Ortiz and Jason Baratek, Derek Lowe and Kurt Schilling, what made this team so good all season is what made them so good in the playoffs. It's depth. Doug Mankiewicz, Dave Roberts, Mike Timlin, Keith Falk, a huge hero. And the other thing is that this team had no fear of failure. Now, part of it is the fact that they played the Yankees 52 times in two years. They were not intimidated by the Yankees the way a lot of their audience was, but in the end, Getting down three to nothing, they never really thought they were going to lose. That's a pretty hard thing to do when you're playing Mariano Rivera, Derek Jeter, New York Yankees, and the stadium. Up next, something the Red Sox did on Wednesday night that no other team can match except the Yankees. They just keep pulling the Red Sox back in. <laughs> so did you know? It's coming up after this. Sports Center. Brought to you by the T1 digital camera from Sony, like no other. All right, tomorrow, go down to your uh, electronic store, buy an HP <laughs> TV, and then call the cable guy, have him meet you at the house. By the time you get back with the TV, the cable guy hooks you up for spectacular ESPN HD. Make sure you say spectacular on You got TV. it, because you get a discount. Thursday, 7.30 Eastern, Syracuse and West Virginia. And a Virginia, care pack. On spectacular ESPN HD, you got to see this. It's amazing. Hey, the PGA Tour swings by sunny Florida for the Funai Classic at the Walt Disney World Resort. Number one ranked PGA Tour money leader, B.J. Singh, looking to defend his crown. Funai Classic at the Walt Disney World Resort, Thursday and Friday at 3 Eastern. That's 9 in the morning Hawaiian, and then Saturday at 4 Eastern. That's much earlier Hawaiian. All on ESPN. Our Red Sox nation digging there. Red Sox, Boston went deep four times Wednesday night, and it's Game 7 victory at Yankee Stadium. That's true. The Red Sox tied a record in the process. Did you know, in addition to the 2004 Old Town team, the 1956 Evil Empire, the only other team to hit four home runs in a decisive postseason game. Those Yanks got two homers from Yogi Berra, grand slam from Moose Gowran, and a homer from Elston Howard. They defeated the Brooklyn Dodgers in nine zip in games out of the 1956 World Series at Ebbets Field. And a pretty impressive uh, comeback by the Boston Red Sox here in the uh, LCS. First team ever to come back not only enforce a game seven after trailing uh, three games to none, but then to win the game seven. So it had some pretty memorable moments. Well, and the last time we sat here on Saturday, it was 19 to something, oh, yeah. and we were just <laughs> shaking our heads saying, wow, this thing is over. Well, it, it is over. Boston, the winner. They're going to the World Series. Enjoy. This has got to be one of the worst massacres in any postseason game ever in the history of baseball. Swing and there's a shot deep to right. Sheffield back. That ball is gone. A home run. It's all over the Red Sox. I still believe it. The Red Sox are going to New York for a game six. And David Ortiz does it again. He reaches out, takes a run, who knocks it out of his glove.